So once again, why are we here? Well, there's national organizers of this event that's going on again all over the country. And the focal point of the national team, the organized team, is in, in re reference to defunding Planned Parenthood. And we all know the lies that Planned Parenthood have been telling us for years. We all know how evil and wicked this place really is. And they've tried to convince everyone how great they are. But we know really the bottom line is this is a place that murders innocent babies. It's, they, they, they receive money to kill innocent children that are created in the womb by God. And so however you look at it in terms of money, in terms of what they get, what they don't get, that's the bottom line is this place is wicked. I guarantee you that uh, this is a place where demonic activity occurs. This is a place that is just, uh, rooted in sin and evil. But of course, I think we would all agree that we wouldn't want to support this place or want our tax dollars to support this place. And the fact is that Planned Parenthood doesn't deserve our tax dollars. They get $430 million annual taxpayer subsidy. That is crazy. And so here's four specific reasons that we believe that they shouldn't get our money. Number one, Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest abortion chain. They perform over 320,000 abortions every single year, more, about one-third of all U.S. abortions. And abortion is their largest source of income, regardless of their little 3% uh, thing that they like to claim that's the largest source of income. One in eight women visiting Planned Parenthood each year will get an abortion here. Number two, Planned Parenthood is a corrupt organization. It's been documented, it's been proven, they've been caught shielding child predators, lying about the services they provide, deceiving government officials, defying state and federal law, submitting fraudulent medical claims and harvesting and selling fetal tissue. So, of course, if this place is killing innocent children, they don't care about life, they don't care about truth. So yeah, we're not surprised that they are corrupt. Satan is corrupt. He mixes the lies with the truth. And so it doesn't matter what kind of truth or what kind of good things you have. If you're mixing that with pure evil, it's evil. Number three, Planned Parenthood exaggerates their whole women's health care idea. In fact, they provide less than 2% of manual breast exams, less than 1% of pap tests, and zero mammograms annually. Despite their name, they offer almost no prenatal care which is less than 0.2% of the total annual services. And number four, defunding Planned Parenthood would not reduce women's health care. But every dollar that would be taken from Planned Parenthood would actually be redirected to thousands of federally qualified health centers that offer a wider range of services and a higher standard of care without doing abortions, which is immoral, unethical, and just downright wrong. It is sin and murder. So again, regardless of their claims, we know that Planned Parenthood is all about really making money for their own wicked schemes and their own selfish motives. And so that's why a lot of people are gathered today across the nation for this message. But I'm also going to add an additional message to this message. And that is, of course, I, want, I don't want my tax dollars to go to Planned Parenthood, but really, I want... I don't want Planned Parenthood at all. I would love to see Planned Parenthood be completely abolished. In fact, I would like to see every murdering facility in the nation completely abolished. 44 years is too long to have legalized murder in this nation. And we as a nation need to repent. If we are sitting by ap apathetically, we're going to be held responsible. The church is going to be held responsible. We as citizens are going to be held responsible for not doing anything. And I thank everyone that's here today because you are doing something, but we need to encourage others to do the same. And so we cannot sit idly by as this wickedness continues to go on where 3,000 babies a day are murdered in the name and on the altar of convenience. We cannot sit by as in times past where there were many people who compromised in the time of slavery, in the time of slavery where there was unjust crimes being committed. And we need more people like William Wilberforce and other people, abolitionists, that rose up to demand that this wickedness stop. 
and be ended. There was the Nazi Holocaust, and there were many people that sat by as they saw and they knew that innocent Jewish people and other people were being taken away and gassed in gas chambers. And so we had people of faith, both Protestants and Catholics, many that compromised, but we also had some that stood for the truth. And so we want to be those who do not compromise, who do not waver, but we stand for what is right regardless of the consequences. The times are going to get even worse, I believe, and, and this is a fight that's not going to end necessarily overnight, but we should de be demanding that it end. We should demand, be demanding that legalized murder should be en ended, and we should not be standing for that in this nation. The Bible says that the shedding of innocent blood is an abomination to him. And the Bible talks about how the land is polluted by innocent blood. And I believe this nation, which I believe is still a great nation, is very quickly corroding because the land is polluted by the innocent blood of the little children that have been spilt and it's spilled every day in this nation. And that is not pleasing to God. And so we know the truth. And people can know the truth. Romans chapter 1 says that people suppress the truth and they exchange the truth for a lie. So there's no excuse, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1. There is no excuse. They can all know. But people do not want to hear the truth. That's the problem. It's not that they can't know it. They don't want the truth. Why do, not, they, do they do not want the truth? Because they want to live the life that they want to live and that's in sin and people don't want to be disturbed and they don't want to be agitated and they don't want to be inconvenienced but it all comes down to being selfish it all comes down to not wanting to be held accountable to righteous standards that are really set forth by God and our founding fathers knew that you see even this when it comes to the Supreme Court even when it comes to Roe versus Wade I want to submit to you today that it actually doesn't matter in a sense ultimately what the Supreme Court says because they are not the supreme law of this land. They may want to think they're the supreme law of this land and they may have people fooled of that but I'm not fooled and there's many people that aren't fooled. Really when it comes down to it, God is the supreme law over all creation. His law rules first and foremost. Exodus 20 chapter 20 verse 13 says you shall not murder you shall not murder and our founding fathers that that wrote the documents recognized that these things come from god that murder is clear that it's immoral and that's why we have laws or should have laws against it so god's law is first and foremost above any man-made law but i believe our founding fathers, many of them, and, and the Constitution and other documents they wrote, recognize this. And the fact is, in human terms, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, not what the Supreme Court says or how they in, make their little interpretations, so to speak. In fact, abortion really is, is wrong and should be, an innocent life should be protected from the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment says no person shall be deprived of life without due process of law. That's in the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. And the 14th Amendment of the Constitution says no state shall deprive any person of life without due process of law nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So guess what? In conclusion, I would submit that Roe versus Wade really is unconstitutional. It violates the Constitution. It's unbiblical, of course, and therefore I believe it's null and void and really should be ignored. In fact, every level of government should be adhering to this. And we need our lesser magistrates to rise up against this. It's what's called the Lesser Magistrate Doctrine. If you've never heard of that, look it up. There's books about it. There's other things about it. The Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrate teaches that when a superior or a high-ranking a civil authority makes an immoral or an unjust law or policy, that the lower or lesser-ranking civil authority has both a right and a duty to refuse obedience to that superior authority. 
So how can you get involved? Well, number one, you're here, so that's a good start. But we need to keep this going. We cannot grow weary of doing good like the Bible says. We need to keep persevering to the end like the Bible says. And there's many things I'm going to mention right now and at the end of this protest to give you some concrete things that you can do, marching orders, so to speak, of how to get active, how to put your pro-life convictions into action. Well, number one, just to give you a heads up, but there is, there is a bill in Texas called HB 948. HB 948, the Abolition of Abortion in Texas Act. And this bill would abolish, if it is passed, would abolish abortion completely in the state of Texas. Now, how many of you guys would like ab uh, abortion abolished completely and immediately? Yeah! Of course we all would. Yes, amen. And so there are people, there are people in power, there are, there are government officials right now that are trying to get this passed. HB 948. In Austin, at the end of the month, February 24th to 27th, there's actually going to be a conference held in Austin on this bill and abolishing the idea of abolishing human abortion. If you want to learn more about abolishing abortion, about immediately abolishing, abolishing abortion, you want to learn more about this bill, HB 948, I, I urge you to, to look into that. I think we have some people that have passed out some little flyers in regards to that, so check out that. There's some websites and some links you can go to. So the conference is several days long, from February 24th to the 27th. There'll be several speakers talking about the doctrine of the lesser magistrates, talking about immediatism versus incrementalism, talking about abolishing an abortion. And there's going to be a major rally open to everyone, the whole public. So even if you can't come to the conference, I urge everyone here to mark your calendars for February 25th, which is a Saturday, at 11 a.m. at the Capitol. There's going to be a, a big rally there uh, to really, again, proclaim truth support this bill, HB 948, so I urge you to do that. Again, if you would like to learn more about how to get involved locally here in activism, come talk to me. Look at loveoftruthministries.com is my website. Uh, sign up on our sign-up sheet, and I would love to, to connect with you and get you involved.